Hello, students. This morning, we're going to learn about the philosophy of ancient Greece. Philosophers are thinkers. They think very deeply. They ask questions, very deep questions. Questions about the fundamental nature of things, of existence, about reality, about just being. Philosophers also ask questions about science and government and nature. A lot of science and philosophy was all mixed up together. It wasn't until about the 1600s that we started seeing a separation between philosophers thinking about deep thoughts and scientists thinking about how to understand nature. A lot of that big division happened when we started using experiments to discover the nature of things. Boy, there's a lot to talk about with the history of philosophy, but we're going to narrow it down to the top three philosophers from ancient Greece that you need to know about. You do need to know about them. These are names that you will hear over the next several years of your education. We'll mention these names specifically when we talk about the history of science and government. Our first big name that we're going to talk about is Socrates. Socrates lived in the Greek city-state of Athens, and he taught a lot of people. He believed that there were some absolute truths that you could discover just by thinking about them. If you thought deep and hard enough, then you would be able to discover mental natures of things. All of this was hidden within you. You just had to think to discover it. He didn't write down any of his teachings, and he actually didn't lecture when he taught his students. He did what we now call the Socratic method. It's a method of teaching by asking a lot of questions. This method can be frustrating at first because the student is always asking, well, just tell me what the answer is. But the idea is, is that it teaches the students to find their own paths to the answers and to really learn how to ask themselves the questions that they're trying to answer. By teaching the method, this is a way that students can understand how to ask their own questions in the future, and they will know which questions to ask. Socrates really wanted his students to find their own answers to questions and to form their own opinions. This was dangerous stuff. Asking somebody to think for themselves, giving someone permission, no, encouraging them to have their own thoughts. Think about how dangerous that would be. For a government that tells you what to do, if you have somebody thinking for themselves, they may not obey the people that are in charge. They may not believe the things that are told to them. They may have their own ideas. It's exactly what Socrates was teaching. And that's exactly why the government leaders in Athens arrested him. In 399 BC, the leaders of Athens had Socrates arrested. They put him on trial for being such a troublemaker. They said he was encouraging the young people to rebel against the government. They put him on trial. They found him guilty. They sentenced him to death and they gave him poison to drink. He drank it, he died. One of Socrates' students was a man named Plato. He also lived in Athens. He studied under Socrates. He also believed in questions. He believed that teaching students to ask questions allowed them to discover the truth. Plato wrote his teachings down, but he also wrote down the teachings of Socrates. Plato had strong ideas about the best form of government. He wrote a book called The Republic, and in this he described what the ideal form of government was. He really thought that the best ruler would be what he called a philosopher king. Now, big surprise, he was a philosopher, he thought philosophers were pretty great. He thought that a king would be really good at ruling if he himself was thinking about those absolute truths, trying to discover what was real and what was important and what was true about the world around them. The best rulers would be deep thinkers. He didn't really like the idea of democracy. Democracy is ruled by the people, but democracy usually looks like people voting to make decisions for their government. Plato looked around and he saw that most of the people that were in his society were uneducated. Most of these people were going to be making foolish decisions because they didn't understand the world around them. Kings were most likely to be educated, most likely to be well-educated. They had that opportunity. So kings were most likely to have the opportunity to be a philosopher and have the best mind able to govern a country. Educated people make better decisions. Remember, most people were not as educated as Plato. One of Plato's students was Aristotle. Aristotle didn't quite teach in Athens like Socrates and Plato. He taught just outside the city limits. He taught his students to avoid the extremes in life. Not too much, not too little. Somewhere in the middle is the best way to live your life. 
Aristotle wrote down his teachings, and he wrote down more than just philosophies of the nature of being and of government. He studied science. He studied astronomy and botany and zoology. He was interested in living things and understanding how they worked, understanding the stars and the planets, knowing what they were about. He wasn't experimenting, but he was definitely on the right track, moving further from just pure thought to figure things out and doing observations and comparisons. Remember, Socrates and Plato believed in strictly thinking to figure things out. Aristotle is using observation and comparison. He also wrote about government. Aristotle wrote about monarchy, oligarchy, and democracy. Rule by one, rule by a few, and rule by many. He said that the best government was going to include features of all three of them. One person in charge, guided by a small group to help them, supported by the larger population. This is important because this is actually how the United States government and a lot of other countries' governments are set up, with one person in charge, guided by a small group, and supported by the larger population. There are many other philosophers from ancient Greece that we could talk about, but these are the big three. Think about it. What kind of government do you think would be best?